What is up to all my internet friends out there in the world? Charlie Pang is here. I'm so pumped that it's Monday and I thought to myself, how am I gonna start off this Monday, right? And that's when it hit me. I gotta show you guys how to customize type to make t-shirt designs in Illustrator. That's what we're gonna do today. But before we get into it, can you guys find the alpaca in the room? He's hiding somewhere and you guys are way too good at finding him. So hopefully I found a pretty good spot for him this time. And by the way, you guys came up with some amazing names and I think I landed on one that I really like. I'm gonna share that in the next video. Let's go ahead and get this video started. The great thing about fonts is there's so many different font styles and there's so many different things that you can do to customize that font, if that makes sense, instead of just going with the normal default. So our goal is to stay away from default as much as possible. We don't wanna just type something out and call it done because that's boring, right? So we really wanna take it a step further and really utilize the font to its full potential instead of, like I said, just letting Illustrator determine how that font looks as soon as you type it out. So I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean by that, but there's so many endless possibilities here, guys. So let's go ahead and begin. I wanna hit T on my keyboard. I just wanna type out create, okay? It's gonna be really small, but we're just gonna resize it just like this, and we're gonna zoom in a little bit so we know what we're doing here. By default, this is what Illustrator tells the font to do. It adds a set amount of kerning, line height, and everything like that that's basically all on auto. But what we wanna do is we wanna take it a step further. So before I even customize anything, what I wanna do is hold an option, hover over the font, and I wanna click and drag up, and that's gonna duplicate it. So we're just creating an extra um, duplicate copy so we have a master copy. From here, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and we're gonna start uh, messing with the kerning of the font. So if I hit T on my keyboard again, I can tap anywhere I want in between these characters and I can even use the left and right arrows to go uh, left to right, obviously, so we can go in between each character. If I go in between the C and the R, you can see this little line, right? It's a faint black line. And if I hold an option, I can actually hit left on my keyboard or right, and I can change the letter spacing just by doing that. See how cool that is? I wanna start changing the letter spacing of things and just kind of tidy it up, I guess you can say, and figure out what I wanna do with everything. So I'm really gonna try to match the, the spacing in between everything. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but I definitely um, you know, wanna make sure it looks pretty consistent. So again, I'm gonna go through everything real quick. And this E is gonna change drastically, so we're not gonna mess with that one yet, but basically we're gonna start focusing on this A first because we're gonna do some pretty cool stuff with that A. What I wanna do is make the E touch the R a little bit. I don't mind that. So the main thing is making sure this top of the R and the top of the E is you know, the same space as everything else. So I think that looks pretty good. I don't mind them touching. We're gonna leave that the same. And now what I wanna do is I wanna outline the text and we're gonna basically think about this font as shapes instead of one text line, if that makes sense. The one thing I wanna do is ungroup everything. Again, we're gonna look at everything as an individual shape. So if I if I get rid of this A, look at that's an individual shape, right? This T is an individual shape. So now we can really do a lot to this. What I wanna do is select only certain anchor points of each letter. So I wanna go to my direct selection tool, which I'm on, or you can just hit A on your keyboard. And I'm gonna select the right side of this E right here. It's on the left of the A. I wanna drag it all the way over until it hits the A. I wanna do the same thing for the T on the right, and I wanna drag it over to the left until it meets with the E. And as you can see, we have this A now, but it's not quite what we want. We're basically just having a lot of fun here, right? We don't wanna to spend too much time on this. We just wanna have a little bit of fun. And this is all subjective. You can do whatever you want to these characters. You can drag them however you want. You can have as much fun as you want with these. Now the A is kinda of hidden, right? And we don't want that. So what I wanna do is I wanna to go to this A and I wanna to go to object and I wanna to go to path and I wanna do offset path. So we're gonna do an offset path on this and we're gonna fill it with white, but this is way too thick. So we're gonna to go to like a three. See what that looks like? I think three looks pretty good, so we're gonna go okay. And we wanna fill that with white. And as you can see, now things are kinda hiding, right? And that's exactly what we wanted. Now the A is popping out again, but what we have an issue with is this T, because now the T is in front of everything. So we can either uh, you know, select that and send it behind everything by either right-clicking, arranging it, and sending it to the back, or we can use the shortcuts, which is uh, Shift, Command, and the left bracket to send it back. But I kind of liked how it's in front of everything. So I'm gonna look at it one more time. So we're just gonna keep that for now. Um, with this left E on the left of the A, I think I'm just gonna keep the center of um, the E the same. I think I like it just default so it matches this one on the right. But what I do wanna do is I wanna extend the T on the right side more. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my direct selection tool, hitting A on my keyboard, and I wanna select the top right corners and I just wanna drag those all the way over. So let me select those real quick. Select both points, hold and shift, and you can drag to the right. And what that's gonna do is it's going to allow you to extend it, see? Just like that. Now, this is looking all right. I, I don't mind the way this is looking, but what I wanna do is I actually wanna drag this E in, and we're gonna copy the same gap in between this A and the T. And we wanna copy the same width, right? So we want this line right here in between the T and the E to be the same as everything else, but 
Um, you can always draw out guides and stuff like that to get it perfect, but for this video, I'm not gonna worry about that. So what I'm gonna do is go to my rectangle tool, and I wanna make sure it's on red or something so I can see what it looks like. And I'm just gonna draw out a box kind of matching the same width down here. As you can see, we're trying to make sure it looks pretty consistent, so I think that looks pretty good. And then I just wanna drag it in place and rotate it, and make sure it's right um, under the T, if that makes sense, so there's not a gap. And I'm gonna fill it with white. And then what we can do is we can actually zoom in, select everything, and hit Command Y, and we're gonna see frames pop up, right? It's gonna be like little thin lines, and now we can drag this up so it's flush with the other line of the T. So now if we compare the original font to the one that we just customized, you can see that it's two different fonts almost, right? It's a completely different design and feel. We are not done yet. We're gonna take this design and copy it once, and we're gonna make sure we flatten everything. So we're gonna go to our Pathfinder and just make sure everything's merged together. And then what we wanna do is delete all the white because we don't want that anymore. So we're just gonna go through it real quick and delete all the white. And this is really quick. We don't have to spend too much time doing this. And we can even change the font color real quick. So we can select the entire um, design and change it to whatever we want, like red. And then this is going to be a little easier to see because now we can kind of see what we need to delete. So I'm just kind of going through and deleting everything that I don't need, just like this. And then you're left with a final design that you can change the color with. What I want to do now is go to my rectangle and change the color to something different, like a gray or something like that. And then what we're going to do is drag out a rectangle. And we just want to drag it all the way around the design. And when you're dragging this out, just kind of make sure everything looks nice and even just like this, and then I want to send that behind everything. So shift command and left bracket, and that's going to send it behind everything. Once you drag that box out, a quick way to make sure everything's centered is just select both things. Make sure your alignment is set to align to selection and just center everything horizontally and vertically. And now you're perfectly center. And then from here, what I want to do is round the corner. So I'm just going to select that shape with my selection tool. And I just want to go to these little white corners and I just want to drag. So now we're rounding the corners. So now we have this box, right? That's pretty cool. And we can change the color to whatever we want. Let's say we want to change it to black. See, now we have this red and black look, which is pretty cool. We can go crazy with the color, but one thing that I like to use a lot is Adobe color themes. There's so many different themes that are pre-selected for you if you go to Explorer, and these all look pretty great. So what I want to do is select this design, or actually we're going to use the same one. What I want to do is select the background, and I just want to select one of these colors real quick. So we're just going to select this blue, and then now I want to select the actual font itself right and I want to select a different color so as you can see we have this really nice like concrete color going on right and you could do this until you're happy right like I can go back to create and I can change it to this orange color look at that oh my gosh look how poppy that is and if you put that on a shirt it's gonna look great so let's go ahead and start mocking this design up and we can do a couple more things to it as well um, while we're mocking it up so what I want to do is go to my little mock-ups real quick let me find them if I can we're just gonna drag one out so let's go to this black mock-up and just drag it out real quick so now we have a cool little mock-up, right? But one thing that I did notice is the mock-up's obviously a darker color, so I'm gonna select this design one more time and I'm gonna inverse the color. So I'm gonna take the back and make it that orange and then make the, um, the actual font itself that blue color, just like this. So now we have a really poppy color going, right? Now we're just gonna resize this, right? And kind of fit it to where we want it on the mock-up so we can visualize what it's gonna look like. Let's say we wanna take it a step further and I wanna add like a slant to it. So I'm gonna select this actual design real quick I'm gonna go to transform, shear, and we're gonna add a vertical shear to it real quick, just to give it something else, you know, give it like a little bit more flavor, I guess you can say. And then I wanna duplicate it once, just real quick. And then I can do command D a bunch of times, see? And now we have a, you know, a font going all the way down the shirt. We're really taking the extra time to make sure this design looks good before we print it, because we can just wait until we print it to find out if it looks bad or not. But this is a great way to really test your design to make sure it looks good. And that's exactly what we're doing. So, so from here, we can do the same thing. We can add that slant again by adding that shear and just testing it out, see what it looks like, you know? And I'm not a big fan of doing this, but uh, this is just one option. And we could take this even a step further. Let's select all of them and I'll show you guys how to add a gradient to it. So let's group them together and let's add a gradient. And after changing that color fill to a gradient, we can go to the gradient tool and change the direction of the gradient, see? And really make it fade into the shirt. See, look at that. So there's so many different things you can do here, and this is really how you're gonna step up your design game by learning how to customize fonts. How delicious was this tutorial? We just took a basic font and we transformed it into a cool t-shirt design using Illustrator. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. And you guys already know I make videos like this one every single week. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss another video and hit the thumbs up button. 
helps my videos grow so much. And I just wanna be honest with you guys, I am so incredibly thankful for all of you. And I am just having so much fun making these videos in 2019 and I feel so rejuvenated to just kill it in 2019. So thank you guys so much for your support. I hope you guys are enjoying my content, but that is it for me guys. Thank you so much for watching, keep creating, keep being awesome. I'll catch you guys in the next video, peace. Did anybody find the alpaca yet? Let me know in the comment section below. I know he's somewhere, he's gotta be somewhere. He just kind of walks around the office and hides himself. And in the next video, we're gonna reveal his name because he needs a name. Today's gonna be a good day. This week's gonna be a good week. Have a great week, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.